Um, thanks, Sarah, and uh, real privilege to be here at your first uh, your first session. And really looking forward to hearing um, the, the groups. I might I might sort of flit around the groups and hear what you're what you're talking about. Um, my sort of I'm going to share a couple of images uh, with you, and you'll get them sort of afterwards as well. I'm I'm mildly dyslexic, and that's been a, a challenge for me throughout my board. Career, so I tend to think a lot in sort of images, often mathematical images, because I'm a mathematician by background. So you'll be seeing some shapes and things. You won't be seeing lots of words. Uh, so let me just share that and that. There we go. So my first image is probably the world's best shape, the triangle. Um, the triangle I've always felt has been grossly under under. Uh, acknowledged by humanity, you know, you think of its contribution to architecture, navigation, and so on. But um, I drew this triangle one day, very early on in my career, when I went to an absolute car crash of a board meeting. It was a family company, it was a reasonable size. Um, there were all sorts of family dynamics, lots of personality clashes, the business was had lost its way. And I was trying to capture uh, what I thought we might need to do to um, to move forward to sort the situation out. And after the board meeting, I, I was chatting with the, the chair, who was called Jack, um, not his real name. Um, and uh, I drew this on my pad uh, because it seemed to me that all the issues that they had as a board, between the board and the exec, had something to do with one of the three things on the outer uh, part of the triangle. So there was no clarity of purpose. They weren't aligned behind anything at all. And they probably weren't, you know, they probably weren't agreeing or even discussing that. They had the wrong people working together in the wrong way. And all the board processes were, were, were really poor. And as a result, they had uh, incredibly low momentum. Does anyone know what the definition of momentum is? What two things you multiply to calculate the momentum of a body. It's really important in a board context. I think you it's want? volume and it, it's, um, is it not mass and weight? Mass mm. and speed. No. Sorry, mass and speed, sorry. No, mass it's and mass velocity. and velocity. No. And velocity. Yeah. yeah, and what's velocity got that speed hasn't? Uh, direction. Absolutely. So if you've got the right critical mass, and, and it is well directed, then you're going to get a great result. So at that point, I, I thought, actually, um, we, we probably make more money if we have um, better boards. And what does a better board look like? Uh, how should it operate? How should it work together? What's the role of the exec? What's the role of the board? And I start, that's when, that was my sort of uh, epiphany moment uh, in, in, in terms of boards. Um, the next thing that I, uh, I, I'm a huge fan of John Venn. Uh, jo John Venn, an amazing mathematician, but also a philosopher. And uh, what isn't very well known was he was one of the first uh, really cool social entrepreneurs. He was doing stuff around social housing, around rights for women long before it was fashionable. But of course, he's best remembered for those two interlocking circles in the middle. And when I would be observing board meetings before investing or, you know, later on when I was sort of advising boards, I, I had this sort of Venn spectrum in my mind that, you know, at the one end of the spectrum, it's a parallel universe. The board and the exec kind of live in parallel universes. The exec don't look forward to boards. They cram them full of information, long um, presentations so that they can't get much questions. <laughs> Um, and they really just want to get out of there and get back to doing what they were doing anyway. And the non-execs aren't really uh, getting stuck in, getting involved, getting informed, and aren't putting the work in necessarily, either because they don't feel al uh, you know, allowed in or just they, they're temperamentally not that way. Or at the other end of the spectrum, they might be trying to do each other's jobs and it might be hard to distinguish if you were just observing who was a, who was a non-exec and who was who was an exec. But in the middle, um, you have this kind of joyous, very highly productive relationship where there's a clear role for the board, clear role for the exec, and there's a clear kind of intersection of stuff we, we do together. 
Um, the next image, I'm going to race through these quite quickly because I think to just go through the images and then we'll uh, th th then we'll discuss. Um, it is a normal distribution, which is another sort of wonderful thing in 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 mathematics. But psychologists who who take a lot of mathematical concepts to to help explain their their, their work uh, took took this and said basically there's a relationship between how effective people are and what kind of pressure they're under. So no pressure no output, you're asleep at one end of the spectrum, you're a headless chicken at the other, and in the middle, you're kind of dynamic but well-controlled, pacey but reflective. Um, and the interesting question here is, where do you think most really good CEOs are on that curve most of the time? Where would they tend to be? To the right. Or to the, the right? Pressure. Uh, over here or up there, here? Yeah. Stick them on the far right. On the wrong Sorry? side of the hump, most certainly. Just, just up here. Yeah, that's absolutely right. So they're always striving for a bit more. I mean, you know, if you look at um, them, they're always wanting more. They're never satisfied uh, with, with it. Where would you put really good chairs and really good non-execs on that curve? Where do they spend most of their time? I see I see the left, like exactly to mirror image of where you, you said the CEO was. So on the top left of the coming up the curve. Spot on, Jenny. Always got time for more reflection than perhaps the CEO has. And the role makes that, you know, it's not necessarily a comment on the individual. It, the role actually conditions you that way too, if you're a CEO. So they've got a bit more time. Now, the next thing to think about is what does a board do? What's an instinctive reaction of a non-exec when they see perhaps the CEO and the CFO kind of slightly below optimum on the right-hand side and trending the wrong way? What, what, what do all of our instincts make us do? More Increase or, sorry, more, more pressure. pressure. Yeah, we want more meetings, more papers. Our language changes, you know, we use the language of concern. Uh, I'm not suggesting you shouldn't, but these things all add to the pressure, whereas actually probably we're better uh, finding ways to reduce pressure a little to increase effectiveness. So sometimes as a, as a board member, you have to act counterintuitively uh, to get the right answer. And it's very hard when you, you know, your instincts are strong and particularly where a company is not doing as well to do this sometimes. So that can create tension in the board uh, and, and exec role. Um, the next image is um, really about the role of the board. And I think often where you have problems with the board and the exec, it's because there's a they're trying to do each other's jobs. They're not clear about the roles. Expectations aren't right and so on. So generally speaking, when I'm um, chairing something new, our first board meeting, we'll spend quite a bit of time on what are we going to do? What are the management going to do? What do we do together? And I find that conversation uh, you know, at regular intervals a really helpful thing. And the simple um, approach I've taken, which... Um, uh, comes from a, a meetings a long time ago is that assuming the purpose is clear of the organization, uh, then it's all about ensuring you've got the right strategy, the right resources and the right governance to fulfill that purpose. That's kind of what the board focus on. And the word ensuring is really uh, important because the role of the executive is really to develop the strategy, the business plan with input from the board at various points, fundamentally to deliver that strategy, that business plan, and to maintain financial and operational integrity. So that's what the two sort of groups um, do. And the, um, the final image uh, I'll show you is really about the importance of self-awareness, because often when there are problems between the board and the exec, um, there isn't the right kind of feedback or review loop or discussion or reflection loop. And so people often aren't aware uh, how irritating they are to someone else, how much more difficult they're making their, their, their job. This slide comes from a piece of research done at Harvard Business School. Um, and what these two guys did was test people to see how self-aware they were. 
So did they have a very good understanding of their strengths and weaknesses? Did they have a good uh, appreciation of the impact they had on others? That kind of thing. Uh, there are robust tests that you can do to, to assess that. Then they put people into groups who had similar levels of self-awareness. So, you know, really attuned uh, people with very high levels of self-awareness in one set of groups, what I call rhinos in another set of groups, they're sort of blundering about, unaware of the impact they're having on others, probably not caring either, um, that, 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 that sort of group. And then they gave them some tests to do, some decisions to take, some conflicts to manage, some coordinating tasks to do. And what they discovered was that crudely, the highly self-aware groups were twice as effective as those uh, who had low levels of self-awareness. So if you want to be a good non-exec and you want to master the art of the then intersection, actually upping your self-awareness is probably a good, good place to start. So I'll stop sharing those slides. And then just say a couple of other things then before we move on to the next part of the, the meeting, just around sort of personal experiences of this managing the board and the exec relationship. Um, I think um, most companies go through different phases. And I think it's a dangerous thing to say, this is the way we are going to work all of the time. And I think we saw through COVID the need for great flexibility about the way you work. So during COVID, you know, that intersection bulged out of it, I think. You know, if you say fundamentally boards provide oversight and support, I think most executive teams you know, and, and, and organizations needed more of both uh, during that. But I think the smart boards were ones who talked about that early on, had the discussion, how are we going to work through this very difficult period? And also we're adjusting towards the end of that too. So they were sort of reducing the bulge uh, consciously towards the end. So it didn't stay at a, a very, in, what was a very intense level for most, for most boards. So that, that that's one thing. Um, the second thing is I've always thought we're all going through a phase uh, our, ourselves, and most CEOs are recruited for a phase, uh, and things change. And the relationship the chair and the CEO has is quite a special and important one in terms of the the life of the board and the exec and the organisation, and the way they work together. Uh, will depend very much, not just on the situation, but depend on their personalities and their skills. So I've always, where I've been chair, sort of had that conversation, say, you know, what is it you really like doing? What are you really good at? And, you know, what are the bits that, that are less strong? And, you know, can we develop those? Or can we share the load on those if you find them very uncomfortable? There are very few, in my experience, perfectly rounded CEOs or management teams. Um, I mean, I've just had too, too, too much experience in lots of different situations to know that, that, you know, that there are many, 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 lots and lots of perfect CEOs or management teams, and there are very, very few perfect chairs or perfect non-execs either. So the trick for me in terms of maximizing you know, the performance of the team, board and execs together is, is, you know, bringing, making the most of the strengths and, you know, supporting the weaknesses, developing people so they, those weaknesses become less. So that, that they're my opening um, thoughts, you, Sarah. 